Welcome to the Red Raider Coaches Show. I'm your host Shane Bent along with Coach Kyle Langford and we're going to try to break down uh, last week's uh, game, go into this week's game and uh, talk a little bit about injuries and a few other things. But first, before we start every show, Coach, we'd like to give a shout out to the churches and the folks that helped in the week prior to get up to the game uh, as far as breakfast, lunch, and or not lunch, but uh, dinner. <laughs> yes, sir. Our pregame meal this week was by Douglas Chapel and uh, we just show up and they say, just come hungry, and they, they feed us all we want. and had delicious uh, grilled chicken, and it was a good meal, and the people just go out of their way to make us feel at home and welcome, and uh, got a terrific message from the pastor also, and uh, so we really appreciate them, and also appreciate our breakfast sponsor, which was Taylor Farms this week, and Mr. Lane Wade. It was fantastic, as always, uh, all, we, all we could handle. Uh, if we'll play as good as we eat, then we'll be in business, you know. <laughs> so. All right, Coach, um, going into, before we get into the game, we're just going to kind of get a recap of uh, folks that we may have injured, folks that may be coming off the IR list or in reserve, if you want to say, um, kind of update on those. Well, it's still pretty much status quo on that. Uh, I talked to a newspaper guy yesterday, and I said, you know, everybody that's injured is still injured, and uh, the ones that aren't aren't. So <laughs> I guess that's a good way to look at it. Uh, Wesley had surgery last week on his leg and uh, he's recuperating now on just well, it's going to be a long process for him but uh, you know everybody else is about the same and when so we got what we got and we're ready to roll Friday night anyway. And just uh, and we know Wesley's not going to be back this year for right. football but just uh, on him he he had his uh, surgery to have his ankle um, ankle uh, bone but put back in place I think is what I've had a lot of people ask me that specific question. Well and he had a couple of uh, I think it was maybe two plates and four screws put in his ankle so uh, a pretty you know terrible injury and the surgery was just was something you really hate to see right but uh, if it ends up being healthy when it's over with then I guess it's all worth it and we can, we can thank God for that but uh, you just you hate it for him as we've said many times before, but you know it's football and it's a tough sport and it's a tough it's a yeah. it's a tough deal. It's not for everybody. And uh, Xavier Hayes, he is um, he's, he's still closer to still coming. rehabbing, and uh, so we expect it within the next couple of weeks. You know, okay. I know we've got an off week coming up here, first October, so maybe around that time, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay. All right, coach, want to um, get into uh, Berrien County and break that down a little bit, kind of give you. The Give us the good, bad, and the ugly. But um, first of all, leading up to that um, practice last week, um, I know we talked to you earlier. Everything you said was going good as far as practice. Nothing out of the way. And there was a lot of distractions with the hurricane the week before. We didn't get to come in. We didn't get to play. Tell fair. Um, just everything kind of played against us that week. But but you said Monday. You seemed, with everything that happened, we'd had a pretty good practice. Thought we had a good week. The whole week was good. Uh, boys on time, ready to work, and we had a good tough. A tough week, you know, it just wasn't quite tough enough and wasn't quite good enough to get the job done Friday night. Uh, but hey, when you when when you play a competitive game like football, sometimes you're good enough, sometimes you're not. Friday night it didn't happen, and we just got to keep working. You know that it, if we work only for the end result of winning and losing, then we're working for the wrong reasons. We ought to be working to become better at what we do every day. And let's be the best that we can be. And if that's good enough to win ball games, then so be it. If it's not, then let's just keep working to be the best we can be. And uh, I like this group of boys, and we couldn't ask for anything, anything more from them. I think probably uh, on the coaching end, we got to pick it up a little bit and get going, uh, especially on my behalf. But our kids are doing what they're asked to do, and they're going hard. We're just not coming up a little short right now. All right, and, and getting more specific about Berrien County, what do you think the key was to Friday night? It was just the, um, was it offense, defense, special teams? I mean, where do you think we were the biggest, coming up short? To me, the biggest difference when you watched it on film, when you watched it live, was their ability to run the football, you know, when they wanted to, and our inability to run the football. And uh, I think we had 13 carries for 29 yards, and that's, that's not going to get it done. You're not going to beat anybody like that. Uh, but on the flip side, you know, Cooper Brown had one of the probably best nights throwing in Bacon County history and threw for 300 yards from a guy that's only, you know, had one start prior to this. So I thought that was really encouraging. But we've got to run the football. 
and that's the bottom line. We've said that from day one, and maybe I was not as committed to that against Barry as we should have been, and uh, so that's something we'll certainly go back to because we've got to be able to do that in order to control the game, to set the tone, and then hopefully to win football games. I think that's something we're going to have to be able to do. Well, you talk about Cooper. He's uh, coming into his you know, third game starting as a quarterback. How, he's definitely improving each game. Um, as far as on the field, how are the boys responding to him as being the leader? And in these games like this, when the chips are down, are they is Cooper still in control of the huddle? Is he? Is oh, he sure. He's you know he's going to keep on slinging the ball, and uh, he plays just as hard regardless of the situation. You know, with him you couldn't tell. He just he's he's programmed to compete, and he goes out there every play, and it is it's going to be the best he's got every play, whether you're up by forty or down by forty. And that's what I like about him. And the boys know he's not a guy that's just going to sit there and, and predetermine where the ball's going. He's going to read the defense. He's going to throw it to the open man, which he did a lot Friday night. And uh, so we're really tickled with him. And uh, I think not only is he getting better every game, I think he gets better every snap. And if you go back and look at the first uh, seven passes he threw Friday, they were incomplete. But then he got hot and ended up hitting 19 out of the next, you know, 30. So that was really impressive on his behalf. Well, on the defensive side of the ball, what do you say we got to do? Well, even Barry and County coming up with Jeff Davis, what do we got? Improvements we got to do there? Yes, the, the same old story. Everybody's gonna give. We got to tackle, you know. And uh, I thought we were in position the other night and gave up that you know 70 yard tall sweep, and that really kind of changed the dynamic of the game because it's a very simple play, something we worked on all week. We had guys in position and. Uh, you know, we've got to make that play. Instead of falling down at the guy's feet or, or whatever, we've got to square him up and make a big wrap. At least we're going to get there and hope everybody else will get there too. And that's something we've been preaching since day one, and we're still preaching it. We've got to get 11 people to the football. Uh, one guy, that's not going to cut it in, in this league especially or anywhere else. But uh, just tackle better. I thought our alignment was good. The communication was good on the back end. I thought DBs were much better this week as far as being in the right position. Now, there are a couple of plays I thought we should have made that we didn't make, but uh, I know that's going to be corrected. You know, if you can at least get in the right spot, then eventually we think it's going to take over where you're going to start making those plays, and, and hopefully that's going to come this week. Well, how is the boys' temperament as far as uh, as the game progressed? And are they still – I know we talked about it in weeks past, so, you know, they stayed there, they fought the fight. Um, are we, do we still have that temperament with the boys, or are they still? Oh, with sure. And, and what was uh, what was good about it, you know, we came in at halftime and I said, look, we played as bad as we could play. There's, there's nothing else we're going to do that's going to mess this thing up. Because we'd come off of, what, two turnovers. Uh, we'd run 18 plays on offense, and nine of them were negative due to penalty or turnover or, or mistake. So I said, you can't play any worse. It's seven to nothing. And we knew we had a good package of stuff that was still that we hadn't gotten to yet. And then on the first snap of the second half for us, we come out and hit them with that touchdown off the screen. So we thought we were in good shape there. And uh, then they just took momentum back with that long run. And uh, But the guy still played. And to be honest with you, the score's a little bit deceiving because even going into the fourth quarter, it was still a very competitive game. And we weren't worried. It, you know, the way I look at it, if we're down 21, we're still fine. You know, we just got to get the ball back and have chances to, to knock out at the lead. And uh, But then it got out of hand. We had a fourth down we didn't convert on deep in their area that we needed to hit, and we didn't, and that led to a touchdown. Then we had an interception that ended up leading to a touchdown. Um, but that was just a, that was not a very good read, but it wasn't – you know, that wasn't a nail in the coffin for us. It was just several things that kind of lead up to it. I, get, I would suppose you never really have one thing that, that determines the outcome in a game, but for us it seemed like we had several just catastrophic and terrible things happen, mm -hmm. That and the next thing you know you're down 40 to 19 or whatever it was. Well, I mean, the, the kicking game, uh, <coughs> lack of or of, does that play a part into your decision, especially getting down on those fourth downs and stuff? Or is it? Do we have that opportunity to make a kick at this point? I, I, I wouldn't suspect so right now. Uh, you know, probably, and we spent a lot of time on this, and, we, you know, they, they call them extra points because they're extra, you know, and and we have not 
converted many extra points. We did convert one Friday night, thankfully. But uh, that's something we, when we go out on the field, it shouldn't be a crapshoot. We shouldn't say, well, gosh, I hope everything goes well. I hope we get a great snap. And I hope we get great blocking. And I hope the hole's good. To get. All that ought to be automatic, you know. And one thing to throw a monkey wrench in it, Wesley was our long snapper, too. So now we've had to sort of have open auditions for long snappers. And that's, as I have discovered in the last couple of weeks, that's a pretty hard job to fill. And people usually don't think about that. They say, well, anybody could do it, but that is a very tough position. And uh, quite frankly, we've had trouble filling it right now. And so that leads into it, too. It's never always a kicker. It's never always a snapper holder. It, it's 11 people on the field together. And if one of them's not right, then the whole thing is not right. Gotcha. Well, we're going to take a quick break, um, Coach, and we'll come back and we'll talk about um, Jeff Davis's upcoming week, what we got to do to get prepared for them, and what the keys are to, to taking that victory Friday night. We'll be right back after a quick message. All right, Coach, before we get started with uh, talking about J.D. this week, we want to kind of flip back in next week, or last week, and talk about the junior varsity and their game against Jeff Davis and the victory that they have there. You want to talk a little bit about that? Who's the head coach and kind of give some folks right. an idea about the J.D.'s program? Well, you know, Coach Wilson and Coach Matt Wilson and Coach Thad Williams and Coach Ryan Morgan, all three young guys, good coaches, and they're kind of heading that up for us, and, and they took those guys over and got a win. And what was so terrific was, you know, uh, that was the first JV game we won in almost two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't think about that. Sometimes JV might get overlooked. But uh, they played really well, and that was a, it was a good, solid win against a very good team. So we were glad to get it. And, uh, you know, I think this group's going to win a lot of ball games in JV this year. And, folks, this is the, the people, these are the kids we're counting on for the next two and three years that are future of the program. And it is imperative that they get on the field and play and at the same time be successful. Because if they get out there and not having any success, well eventually kids are gonna quit doing it. So I just appreciate the effort they had. We got I got to go over there after we practiced and, and check out the second half and I tell you they really played hard 
and uh, it was a good win for us for sure. And this week, they uh, they'll go to Telfair County, and uh, so that'll be an exciting game too. I wish I could make it over there to that one. Um, now, kind of with the injury, with all the injuries we've had, um, Cooper coming at varsity kind of threw a monkey wrench in your JV plans. Sure. So you want to talk about who your quarterback is and who's leading well, up for JV? <laughs> well, really, it's uh, probably a week ago. We just basically said, does anybody have any aspirations of playing quarterback here? And uh, Savion Miley said he sure would like to try it, and is really good. You know, we had no idea. He's always been a receiver and a running back kind of guy, but we had no idea he could play quarterback, and he threw for over 200 yards in the JV game, ended up rushing for a few too. So we really think the future is bright for him, and there's a lot of good receivers at that group. And uh, I'm telling you, it's just an exciting group. And we've got some of them playing on Friday nights for us now. Mm -hmm. So they're not at full strength either. But I, I really like with the effort they play with. They show up every day and work hard. And, and they deserve just as much uh, praise and just as much attention as the older guys, in my opinion. Yeah, they're the ones that usually get le least attention. So. Right. All right, Coach, moving into this week. Um, again, we, Pierce game's rivalry, but J.D. seems to go deep within the <clears throat> core of us too as far as a rivalry and that game going um, back and forth over the years. Um, do you do anything different this week at practice? I mean, I know, you know the answer's always no, it's, you know, you know, just week four we're playing Jeff Davis, just another team, but do you handle it any different as far as trying to keep the emotions up or down or um, pepping them up for this game, which they shouldn't have to be, but. Right. Well, the biggest thing for us, obviously, it is Jeff Davis, but the, the most important thing is this first region ball game. And, and that is, and as tight as this thing's gonna be in this region, and you've got some very equal teams, teams I think are very similar, it's gonna be critical to get out and get this first win. All right? Regardless if it's Jeff Davis or whoever, it just happens to be them. But uh, all our attention is getting this first region win. And we told them, if you get this first region win, then you put yourself in position to keep fighting, you know, to, to be in even a better position somewhere down the road, mm -hmm. and then a lot of that pain and hurt we felt the last couple of weeks can be minimized by, by getting this win Friday night. And I know there'll be a lot of people uh, tickled to death to get this one in first home game too. So yeah, we'll probably have to calm them down a little bit, I'd say. Well, it's almost like wiping the slate clean because really nothing before right. this Friday night even matters. Right. Um, Friday night's when, it, when the rubber meets the road and we got to bring some well, and the thing, Victor's home. you know, the, the thing that, that is important and that you kind of look at when you're scheduling, you know, you get momentum playing these non-region games. You can get a lot of momentum and roll through that region, or either you can be behind eight ball a little bit like we are and, and know that, hey, we've got to get going. And the thing that's impressed me about Jeff Davis is, and we've seen him on film with every game they've played, and I think they've really gotten better from the scrimmages on to last week. And they played well enough to beat Brantley, and Brantley's a very good team. So I was very impressed with the way they played Friday night. And, uh, you know, we've got to kind of do some of those things and be successful, take care of the football, run the ball. They run the ball very well. And they're a spread team. They've converted from the wing tee to the spread. And I'll be honest with you, I think they've done as good a job of doing that in this short period of time as anybody I've ever seen. And you know, having an outstanding quarterback and, and running back helps a lot too. But uh, I've been very impressed with them. What do you think, I know, you know, running and holding on the ball, but what is the key to beating Jeff Davis Friday night? I mean, is it gonna be on the offense side of the ball or defense side of the ball? We, I know you, you're, you're ball control, you like to be able to I'd like control to, that. Yeah. So what, what do you think the key is Friday night? Well, you know, anytime you have a freshman quarterback like they do, and the guy's outstanding, he's going to be, he's a very good quarterback right now, and he's going to be fantastic. I think it's just mixing up coverages, uh, you know, giving him some different looks. We don't want to give him the same look every time. We want to give him a couple of different looks and maybe things he hadn't seen before, you know, and we hope that's going to help us out defensively. And then offensively, you know, can we block? Can we throw? Can we catch? Can we run the ball hard in between those tackles? And uh, if we can be committed to that and, and, and really let's kind of assert ourselves as a, we, we think we're physical and we think we're this and that, 
well, let's be it. You know, we can't talk about being physical and we can't talk about being strong and this and that and then not show it, mm -hmm. you know, because people are going to make you out to be a liar if that's the case. And uh, so we've challenged our guys this week, and I think, uh, I think our practice this morning was one they won't forget for a while. And uh, so maybe that's what we need. And I, what did somebody, I heard somebody say one time, if you're not tough, then it doesn't matter what offense you run. And if you're not tough, it doesn't matter what defense you run. We got to be tough first and foremost. Uh, we can put all the cute stuff in the world and throw for 400 yards a game, and it's not going to matter if we're not tough. So we're going to keep pounding away on that. It's going to eventually come. The, the mindset for most people, you get frustrated and get uh, kind of down when you don't win games. But we know we're doing the right thing. We know the kids are working. And just got to keep on that path. And that's not easy to do because sometimes you want to scrap it and say, well, let's just go to this or let's do that. But we're doing the right things. We're just not doing them well enough right now. So then that's on us. That's on coaching. When you're not doing well enough, your coach has got to do a better job. And uh, so I think we'll get that accomplished this week as well. All right, Coach. Well, we're going to definitely be uh, rooting for y'all Friday night. And I encourage everybody to be out Friday night. This is our first home game. First home game with Jeff Davis, first region game. So there's a lot of excitement. Should be Friday night. Um, just a lot going on this week. And then that next week's homecoming, we'll talk about that uh, next week. But uh, well, I'll tell you this, too. And I, and I know people say this, and I sincerely mean it. You don't know what kind of impact that a crowd like that has, a home crowd has on the players and the emotion of the game. Mm -hmm. And, boy, we need everybody. If, if you can find a way up here, we got to have you Friday night in it. If you don't like what you see and you, you, don't, you ain't proud of the way we play, you don't ever have to come back. But we need you Friday night. And I think we're going to make you proud. And I think it's going to be something you're going to enjoy watching. And, and who knows, you might, it might be a kind of history-making night. You might want to see it. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first from Coach Langford. Um, and, again, I encourage you to be out Friday night. There was a, just a, nothing better than South Georgia football on Friday nights. And uh, we appreciate Coach Langford and his uh, staff and uh, – We'll be looking forward to Friday night. So, again, we'll see you next Monday. Um, we'll be talking about homecoming and the game coming to that.